All right, everybody, welcome back to another episode of Around the Block. This episode, we are here with two very special guests, Decisive TV and Hap Hazardous Waste. Welcome to the show. Oh, you don't have to introduce us as special. Come on. You guys are we special. We all know time off Drew. and You guys and, are very uh, special. Uh, oh, man. So, yeah, uh, I, um, unfortunately, time off Drew is not here today. Yeah, he took a nap and missed it. Yeah, he's napping right now. <laughs> We've never had any he's guests dead, before dude. miss an episode because they were napping. So, um, yeah. <laughs> Come on. Come on. <laughs> we gotta, Hap, why you got to throw Shane like that right Hap, now? Where are you? We just started this episode. Is he here? Uh, oh, sorry. I was, oh. I was thinking about something else. Oh, it sounded like you he was were taking uh, a nap. He was, it sounded like you were napping. No, oh no, I would never take a nap for a podcast. Oof, that's just poor behavior right there. Mm. Yeah, I agree. Hey, come on, man. <laughs> uh, well, I don't no shade or anything. I was just I'm just saying, people that nap when they were scheduled to appear on a podcast, like that's just bro. That's just not the, right. The, bu <laughs> the bus is right in front of you, and you're throwing me in it. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> no, okay, okay. So for everybody that isn't aware, um, last week we were supposed to uh, record an episode, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, it was just me and Drew that showed up. Yeah, I mean, you know, yeah, you viewers, you watching this, you can go watch that that episode first because it's the one before this one, and you should watch it in chronological order anyway, and then come back to this one. Yeah, but every everybody should just episode, watch. Everybody watch all four episodes in a row. It's only, it'll only take like yeah. 10 hours, so it's like nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and it like it has a story behind it, so you kind of have to like key in on certain points, and they all connect. Yeah. So you got to get the, the previous four episodes to make sense. It's essential. And then when lore. you're done, when you're done with that, you have to also go back, back to the very last episode, and then play that in reverse and keep doing that for every episode then to get the secret podcast that's recorded on top of that. Yes. Exactly. Yep. yep. Mm -hmm. And then after that, you play all of them, e even this one, all five episodes at the same time, and then there's a another secret message <laughs> on top of that. <laughs> okay, this is getting ridiculous yeah. now. Okay, 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 okay. Um, but so, there actually is. Real first segment for both of you guys. What have we learned from YouTube in the past year? Oh, or just since we started. Oh my! You God. especially decisive. Oh. Yes, decisive. You, you have the floor because mm -hmm. I am very curious about how you are rushing it right now. <laughs> um. Uh, so you know, you you do the YouTube thing. You like upload video, and then people watch. No. <laughs> so, slow down. So, slow down. I'm, I'm taking notes. Slow down. Hold on. <laughs> Uh, basically what I mean by that is like, uh, so I have my second channel, my main channel, I used to do crypto on and all that stuff. That stuff blew up and people just wanted to hear me talk about crypto and what the news was during like e each and every day. Uh, so I was uploading like at least once a day there for a couple months. So, and, and it wouldn't be at the same time, I don't think, which was probably a mistake on my part. Because with my second channel, uh, Indecisive TV, that one, uh, I mean, you, you two are subscribed, but I'm sure you've seen what's happening over there. But uh, I'm getting like hundreds, like a minimum 500 views a video. And I post every other day at the exact same time. Um, it, it's nothing special. I'm just recording Minecraft content while doing a commentary over it. So whatever I'm doing in the episode, I'll commentate uh, while I'm doing it just so people know why I'm doing it. Yeah. And how, like, how long is whatever it thoughts you... come to my head. Sorry, but how long is it taking you to make one of these these videos? Um, About an hour. <laughs> wow. I was going to say, because so... the one video you did where you mentioned you were on the Cornerstone SMP... Like you must have recorded that like that night because you were you started off in the shopping district 
and you showed like the the Mount Rushmore thing that Drew is building, and I had already put up myself and Brandy's face, which I recorded at like right. I live streamed that at like. <laughs> I finished that live stream at like seven, eight o'clock at night. I was like, "Dang, dude!" Wait, when... <laughs> yeah. Wait, when did I when did I upload that one? That one would have been Thursday. It was I like think, literally the posted. day after I oh. live streamed. So it was, I think it was Friday. You did yeah, that. Yeah, Tuesday. Tuesday. Like, yeah, it, it basically takes me like an hour ish. It depends on what project I'm I'm working on. So. Like with my my starter house that I just finished that I didn't finish for like 16, 17 episodes. I finally finished. Uh, and that that took me gathering all the resources and everything like that, probably about two hours. So I I just get on my world like after work. I get on my world and I'm like, I need to record the video. What's the video going to be about? I don't know. I'm going to walk around in the world, just look at stuff, see what I can put in the world. Whatever comes to my head, somebody's already done the video idea, but I can do it with me. So that's kind of what goes through my head. And the thing that I figured out was holding me back about my main channel and about Cornerstone is I wanted to be unique. And there is no uniqueness now besides being yourself. So like people will do mega mega bases or whatever and i'm i'm not the best at building or making mega bases or dedicating myself to a huge project on minecraft that gets very tiring working on the same thing every single day uh until it's finished is very like demotivating for me uh i know that's a bit different for you jack because you do absolutely crazy stuff and you'll you'll work on an entire mountain for days on end Hey, Even just, if you make a video or not, it's just what I do. <laughs> exactly. Well, exactly. Is, your, so, like, your I can... new channel like breaks almost every like rule of modern YouTube. Like the, I mean, I'm not trying to diminish what you're doing here, but I mean, the thumbnails are like pretty just normal, I guess you could say. Right. Um. Pretty basic. Uh, yeah, basic. But it, I feel like the. The audience that you're reaching is like yearning for like that style of content, like now. Yeah, yeah. You pretty much so... kind of went back to sort of the roots of like Minecraft on YouTube, because I know for a while uh, I kind of blame like Hermitcraft a little bit for the standard that was set for sort of like a Minecraft Let's Play, because yeah. Hermitcraft kind of like builds these gigantic projects. It takes like sometimes multiple episodes, but it also takes like just a monumental amount of work to do. And for a while, that was kind of the standard that was set for anything related to survival Minecraft. But early days of YouTube is kind of the exact same formatting you're doing right now, where it's literally just someone turning on Minecraft and just playing the game. And so it's, it's kind of crazy to see how the response has been to that change, because I've kind of, I've been, Admit, like this is kind of like future news for my channel, I guess, but I've been kind of trying to go back to that. And it's really hard for me to kind of like put myself in that mind space of, yeah, all I'm gonna do for this episode is like, go find a village and that's it. Exactly. I I'm so happy that you pinpoint accurate. Like that is exactly what I'm going for. That is exactly word for word what my thought process is while making these videos. So the person that actually inspired me to, to start doing that or start doing the Let's Play is uh, a guy by CJ9091. And um, granted, he's uploading video. He would upload Let's Play videos every day. And I did every other day because it just worked for my schedule a lot better. And um, I also realized that was probably the right choice um, because the the people that are watching my videos, they, as you said, they want the old kind of let's play content. And if you go back to 2012, 2013 Minecraft, whenever it was first starting to get super big, before all these challenge videos, all these 100 day videos, all these hardcore let's play videos, all of these Hermitcraft style-esque SMPs and videos uh, with these huge projects, as you said, um, they would upload, people would just 
do something in Minecraft and they would upload like every other day, every day or like every third day or something like that. Like the videos would come out consistently and, and they'd be a lot quicker to come out than they are today because the thing is they're not hard to make. They not that they don't take any effort, they certainly do. Uh, but it's just a lot easier to do and a, a lot nicer for people to watch, in my opinion, because they don't have to expect a whole, whole bunch uh, from the video. Um, oh, yeah. I'm kind of losing my train of thought now, but... Well, yeah, exactly. Well, to your point, too, like, to about that kind of old formatting. That old formatting, people don't understand that. Like, the Let's Play Minecraft, where you just kind of go... You play for a little bit, record it, upload that to YouTube. That warped the algorithm for YouTube because that is kind of what kickstarted gameplay channels on YouTube in the first place. But also, it, it's kind of what made the algorithm start favoring watch time. Now, of course, the algorithm shifted as the years have gone by, but during that time, watch time was the priority. And so, when you have a channel that's able to pump out a video a day for like, it could be like a 13 minute to like a 30 minute video or something like that. Like people would just come back and watch the whole thing over and over and over. YouTube started realizing, oh yeah, people like people that want to watch content want to watch like the entire thing through. And so if someone watches a whole video for like a 30 minute video or something like that, that's what kind of makes for a good video on YouTube. So it was just like, format breaking in its time so that's why it's crazy to see that it's still like that even today and um uh another like I, I, before i found cj9091 uh and his let's play and everything like that i and, and seeing the success from his let's play is really what started it for me but um i, I thought about doing it for like a month before I found this channel because it was just one of those things where I was like, I'm starting to crave it and I don't want to see like it's starting to a uh, hermit craft is starting to annoy me kind of <laughs> it's uh, it's not that like they are annoying. It's just the content is just it feels the same and it feels like it's just a whole lot for 20 minutes of my time, um, which I guess nowadays would be considered like a good good thing like oh you have a lot of content in this 20 minutes but that's not really what i was craving i guess and i i guess my second channel let's play kind of shows that is that people are wanting to go back to these roots like as hap said the people are wanting to to go back to the roots of minecraft let's plays and gaming on youtube as a whole i uh, and I guess I also kind of looked at um, Spoon Kid. Uh, he does the Rust content, and it's like an hour, hour and a half long videos, two hour long videos. And I sit there and I watch the entire thing. Like I, I didn't realize like how often I watch his videos, and I he like barely any editing or anything like that. He, like he'll he'll cut out bits and pieces where it's just like super quiet and nothing's really going on. Um. But besides that, it's pretty much raw footage for the most part. So I'm like, if I can do that, and he has like almost a million subs on his second channel, I'm like, if I can replicate that, but in Minecraft and use my personality to bring people who want to watch these videos of not a mega base being built, not a huge project being built once every month or like once every couple weeks, I can just give people like small little bits uh, every other day so then they can watch it and be entertained by it and have something to watch every other day then I can garner that audience and I feel like my second channel has very much garnered that audience sadly YouTube is starting to z screw my second channel over a little bit and they're not recommending my videos as much but they're still on the suggested page the browsing features everything like that so it it's finding its way into that audience but uh, it's just, I, I feel like there's a lot more and YouTube's just not pushing it now like it did at the beginning of last month, mm. which is interesting. Yeah, I, I completely stopped watching 
uh, I don't know what you'd call them, like Mr. Beast clones or Dream clones or whatever. But just people that just make Minecraft videos, but it just the videos just feel like sensory overload because the editing is so quick and there's just so much going on, and they're accomplishing so much in this little amount of time, and. You can immediately tell that the video is going to be like that just from what the, the thumbnail looks like. And I just completely stopped watching those videos. And ultimately that ended up just being my... They just left my recommended. I don't see them anymore. I don't really see a lot of Minecraft in my recommended anymore. Yeah, kind of mm -hmm. same here too. I mean, I I think I also kind of stepped away from Hermitcraft just because uh, of the same reason. It was just kind of sensory overload. But also just because, you know, I it's it's hard not to compare like your content to like the people that kind of made it on YouTube. And especially with like Hermitcraft and whatnot, there is so much input into what they do that of course, like that, that's their full-time job. That's all they do. But I kind of stepped away from Minecraft for a while on my channel, just purely because I felt like I couldn't quite match that. And, but seeing what Decisive is doing now, just kind of like playing Minecraft to play Minecraft. Like I want to get back to that i kind of want to just play not have any like grand expectations involved not have my audience hold those expectations but rather just kind of show up almost like just i mean early gameplay again it was kind of almost just like listening to the personality while they were playing a game like they could be playing anything because that's why let's plays were just whatever for the time that they, there wasn't anything about like niches things like that it was just more like it's this personality, and they're playing a game, and it works, and people love it. Dude, my exactly. my whole opinion on Hermitcraft is, I mean, I love everybody from Hermitcraft. I, I will I will always like look up to these people, but like comparing their content now to back in the day, it it does feel like older Hermitcraft episodes were made towards a more general audience, while now. It is aimed towards a younger audience, which there's nothing wrong with that. A lot of the the videos we're doing now are those, what what do you call them? Like the the no life series. I haven't watched a lot of them. Secret life. Secret life. Third life series. Third life. Second life. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I I'm, I don't, I'm so I mean, far removed. I don't even know yeah, what I'm no. talking about. <laughs> I I don't really have any reason to watch them because I'm not really interested in them. But I, I would watch if they they went back to more of that season six, season seven style. Oh yeah. I uh I especially love season four. I think it was season four, where they were all in the Mesa together. Season four this, or yeah, season yeah. four or season five is I think th yeah. When that, they, that when was, they built the shopping that was district in the too. Mesa. Yeah, because I, I think it also was it was kind of more I guess it was just had something to do with the fact that they were they gave themselves that restriction to stay within that mesa and kind of build up an entire city there, and so as a result, their content was more is more akin to like things that are decisive that decisive is doing. It's not necessarily like these big grand projects where you know they're like these huge redstone contraptions or this like giant mega base. It was more like I'm gonna build my house on this plot of land and see if I can get it to work. But then on top of that, you could get to see like everyone else's progress right there in the vicinity too, which just made it so good. I really loved that season. It was so good. Yeah. It um it's definitely weird seeing how the content has changed over the years and obviously we've grown and our, our tastes have changed. Um and so have all the other viewers. So like what what we think is annoying now, we might not think is annoying in the in a couple of years from now. Like we might go back to how content is now if it shifts drastically again, which it will at some point. So like capitalizing on one people wanting older style let's plays now can secure you a spot in the future. Um cuz obviously like as we've said, Hermitcraft used to be this, like, people playing a, playing a video game together uh, and doing stuff together and not people needing to make content with each other. Going back to, uh, like, what an audience wants is, like, we're wanting older style Let's Play videos to get that that feeling of 
accomplishment without being overbearing. I guess is a, a good term for it. Yeah. So. I agree. Yeah, like what what I'm doing on my second channel is very simple, very easy, very quick, but people are watching it because they want that and they want to watch me like i feel like i've garnered an audience now that i'm getting more returning viewers than i am getting new viewers and i i have been for the past like three weeks because youtube just yeah. isn't recommending as much that is what i need to learn how to do is to try to get people to return to my content instead of trying it's... to just get new people every single time mm -hmm. it's um so what i've learned from this past month and a week that I've been uploading to my second channel every other day. You want to keep it consistent because people will come back if they know when you upload. So me doing it every other day at 3.30 p.m. Central Standard Time, people know that's the upload time for Indecisive TV. That's when I can expect to be on YouTube if I want to watch this video. So it's like keeping it consistent, even if you don't do every other day, if you do it on the weekends, let's say, well, you know, you got to figure out your schedule. You got to figure out how your work schedule is and time management. Like, do you have finals coming up? Okay, what can you do in order to swerve around those finals and work around them in order to make content? And when can you make content? Can, can you keep it consistent? Do you upload twice a week? Do you upload only on the weekends? And do you upload Saturday and Sunday or just Saturday or Sunday? So... And what time do you upload? Because keeping the same time will keep people watching your videos. So uh, people say time doesn't matter on YouTube. Whatever you upload doesn't matter on YouTube as long as you upload. That is not the case anymore from what I've learned. That people, to get returning viewers, you need to upload at the same time. And even Mr. Beast is starting to do that. He's uploading every Saturday at the same time. Because he wants to pass T-Series. And he's getting those views back because people know when he's going to upload. Mm. So you are, you are speaking my language, sir. <laughs> so that, yeah, that that is how you get the returning viewers is by letting them know when you're going to upload. I'm taking notes. Not saying it, but just doing it. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's just you got to figure out what, what works for you your time people have been saying this for years and it's changed and i haven't heard anybody really say it for a few years at least like i i think definitely back in 2016 2017 whenever i was starting to get more into youtube and trying to figure it out more uh one of the things that came up a lot was you gotta be consistent you gotta upload at the same time you gotta like figure out your schedule so then you can make videos whenever you can. Um, but it's a lot about just making the videos. Oh, you yeah. don't want to overbury yourself so then you don't get burnout. That's what happened with me in Cornerstone. I went too hard into too big of projects instead of keeping this smaller, simpler stuff. Like if we were to do a season three, I'd do it just like my Let's Play. I would build a house it, it could be a crappy house it could be a really cool house but i just build a house and then i would build a farm for the next episode and then i would build like a shop for the next episode or something like that you know small little things while also working my viewers through it instead of being like yeah we're gonna we're gonna skip or do a time lapse of this i, I like i want to walk the through viewers through it because that's what people want to see they want to see uh the process of why does this exist like what what brought this person to make this thing um and also you can just talk about like whatever your mind comes up with right so like with this podcast people are going to watch it because they want to watch a podcast they want to watch people talk about whatever so you just you talk about whatever <laughs> right <laughs> and and so uh you make minecraft videos with your personality with whatever you talk about and people are going to watch it. This is why I've been dying to talk to you, Decisive. I don't know if you knew this, but uh, I have really taken a look at my YouTube channel as of late and realized that I'm doing a myriad of things wrong. And I wanted to kind of figure out what I was doing wrong with that. And so 
for like the past couple months, I've been just kind of diving deep into what makes a successful YouTube channel. And I've even been like taking, I even have a whole notebook on it now. But uh, mm -hmm. I think what it, a lot of what it boils down to is like, definitely the number one thing for a channel is consistency. And I think the way that you approach that is like you said, you find those times to work it. But really it's like, you gotta ask yourself the question, if you want this to be your job, should you treat this like a full, like should you treat this like a job? And you really should, because if you wanna make a career out of YouTube, you have to treat it as such. You have to put in the time, put in the work, deliver quality, but also deliver consistency. Do you wanna spend your time doing one amazing video that might get might get picked up by chance, or would you like to raise your odds essentially and put more out there for more to get picked up yeah and so that's, that's like the the big thing is like you can't expect quality from a channel with 200 subs you can't expect quality from a channel with a thousand subs you can't expect quality from a channel with ten thousand subs you can expect quality from full-time youtubers like, with a hundred thousand plus subs who get hundreds of thousands of views of video because they have those resources they have that time to make those videos you can't expect a, a gaming channel that makes minecraft content that's just starting out to dedicate eight hours a day into it to come out with like crazy freaking projects at least at the start and that's why we've seen this change in content from hermitcraft is because more of them are becoming full-time more of them are able to dedicate that time into their videos. And that's why now it's like we're starting to get tired of it. Or, uh, well, I guess not tired of it. That sounds pretty bad. But we're starting starting to get exhausted of the same thing over and over again because there's so many full-time content creators now that people want more personality over hours and hours spent on a video for just one single thing. Uh, decisive i i have a question I, for you so yes how how long do you think this this system that you found is going to continue like how, how much how much longer do you think you have before eventually you're gonna have to change so i think like i don't know the youtube algorithm is changing every week every day right so like I've noticed a substantial decrease in views. Uh, it's kind of crazy. So I used to get over a thousand views a day for, let's see, how long was that? I got it six or a week in a row. So seven days in a row, I got over a thousand views a bit or a day. Um, and now I'm getting like 400 plus views, 300 plus views a day which is like still pretty good for a, a channel with 500 subs but um definitely a, a noticeable decrease and i i don't think my returning viewers have not gone down too much it's just youtube is not pushing it out as much so my impressions have gone from about 20k a day for that week down to Let's see, yesterday I got about 9,000. And I'll get like over 10,000 views or impressions a day. Um, click through rate has stayed the same. Average view duration has actually gone up, um, which kind of obvious. The more views you get, the, the lower average view duration is um, typically. But and also, I do think. It oh. it is easier for somebody to jump into a new series since you're you're starting to get into the the later episodes. I think what are you up to like eighteen or something now? So it, I mean it is once you see somebody uploading like an episode one, it's easier to jump into like straight from the beginning, right when it comes out. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's uh that's definitely whenever YouTube recommends it the most because it's the start of a new series. And YouTube's like, oh, we're gonna try and find out who likes this video, and then we'll push it to them, and then we'll 
uh, like people, yeah, as you said, it's easier to jump into. So more people will click on the video and YouTube's like, oh my God, these people really like this video. We'll push it out more. But as you get into the later episodes, like you said, it's uh, a lot harder to garner a new audience for these videos because it's like nobody wants to jump into a, an episode 20 of a series that's just the, randomly without knowing who the person that's is. That's the problem I'm trying to figure out because I'm over 60 episodes into my Let's Play. And I'm trying to figure out ways to get people introduced to it. That's my main problem. Take out the episode number. Just take it out. Take out the episode number. Yeah, I was going to say the same thing. I, I think that that's kind of uh, the downfall of the longevity of a series. Do you put the episode mainly, number in mm -hmm. episodes? Decisive? I do. I do. For So how my videos get recommended is I the day I upload them, oh, yeah. they'll get those returning viewers first and then youtube the day after it's uploaded will recommend it to a bunch of new viewers so when i actually i do have to do you think taking it out of the title is a big part of that <laughs> just to maybe leave it in the thumbnail maybe put the number in the thumbnail but leave it out of the title i'd say the opposite no. actually or leave it in the people okay. see the thumbnail first yep People will see the thumbnail first before they read the title. And even then, if your title is long enough, it won't show up on the homepage. See, and that, that's that, kind of what I've been researching, kind of. too, when it comes to different aspects about YouTube. I, I think about, I, I, I literally just, like, Google questions I have about this, like, what makes a good title? What makes a good thumbnail? And, like, obviously, when it comes to thumbnail, it might be damaging to leave the episode number in the thumbnail itself, but you could probably leave it in the title just fine, just at like the end or something. But mm -hmm. that's where like click through rate really improves is if you have a really eye catching thumbnail, a really like a, a, a title that pro like provokes the feeling of curiosity, things like that. And then of course, you know, keywords, things like that. I mean, you start going down the rabbit hole with all these different aspects, but especially with like the thumbnail and whatnot. I think the thumbnail is like the one thing that really you have to prioritize, which is, I mean, it's just something I've been kind of looking into these days. So yeah, I would say for sure, definitely like keep a good title, maybe leave the episode number in the title itself, especially if it's kind of like a, a series about growth or like a sequential series, that sort of thing. But uh, yeah, definitely don't do it in the thumbnail. <laughs> yeah. Um, and that's like what I've realized with my second channel is uh, so the day after it's uploaded all or well, usually whenever the next episode is uploaded now but um, I have two thumbnails ready so I have the uh, thumbnail with the episode number in it and then I have one without and so now I'll just switch it out and if you go on my second channel, there, there's no episode number except for on episode one. So people know that's the start of the series. But uh, with titles, it's, it's kind of tricky in a way because you want a title and a thumbnail can go hand in hand. And I was talking about, uh, I was talking about it with Drew uh, a couple days ago is like, you want your title and your thumbnail to go hand in hand. You want your title to tell a story along with your thumbnail telling that story as well. Or you want your, your title to support the story your thumbnail is telling. So, like, a lot of, um, for example, like, episode 17 of my Minecraft series on Indecisive TV is called Home Sweet Home dash let's play minecraft 17 so i have the let's play minecraft consistent along with the episodes because it tells the viewer this is a let's play of minecraft and mm -hmm. the home sweet home part is just a little clever thing that i've thought about like what is the video capturing it's me building the starter base so it's a home and it's like the saying home sweet home so it tells the viewer this is going to be our home let's play minecraft and then the thumbnail is just a picture of my character in front of my home so it, it's very simple but it tells that story of this is what the video is about and here's a catchy thumbnail just being kind of clever while also saying it's a let's play 
how do you make your thumbnails? Do you log into a different account so you can like take a picture of your your character? Or do you use no, like No, use Freecam uh, mod. Freecam? Oh, okay. Freecam mod is the best friend. <laughs> uh, the the plight of bedrock players will never be able to do that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or Yeah, um you could also use F5 I guess in bedrock, but like or well at quote unquote F5. Yeah, so I just like I'll do the free cam on, mess with the FOV if needed, and then I'll put it in the Photoshop. I'll turn up the vibrance, uh, turn up the saturation a bit, so then it it it's a lot brighter, it's a lot more eye catching, and then um, I'll also increase the brightness and contrast if I need to. Like my newest episode, episode nineteen that I uploaded today. That one was very dark, so I needed to up the brightness in order for the saturation, vibrance, and contrast to work. And then it's just an eye-catching thumbnail because love, you can tell what's going on. I love the title, The Shaft. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, thought, I was hoping people would find that funny because the mine shaft doesn't sound very interesting. And <laughs> saying that the shaft is a lot funnier. So I love it. It would, it would get that initial reaction out of a viewer. Like, the shaft? What is he talking about? And it's like, like oh, my God. <laughs> right? So, yeah, that, that, that was kind of the hope, and I, I hope it works. It seems like it's doing all right. It's a, a 5 out of 10 video right now. I will definitely watch. And... Everybody that listens, mm -hmm. please go watch. I'm sure Decisive will have, like, three new videos by the time this comes out, but still. Oh, gosh. Oh, yeah. Um, we're about, or I mean, we're almost an hour in. Uh, I think it's a good time to uh, introduce who you guys are. Uh, <laughs> probably should have done this at the beginning. Um, but for people that are new or have um, have not watched Decisive or Haphazardous Waste, if you guys want to like kind of describe your channels. Hap, if you want to go first. No, no, you got this, man. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, so I'm Decisive TV or indecisive TV as a lot more people are starting to know me as, which is weird because that's the, the second channel. Uh, I do Minecraft content mostly now. I used to do crypto content back in 2021 uh, and then my channel got banned and then I got it back and then it, it was all messed up. So now I do Minecraft content. I play with these two and a bunch of other content creators and friends on a server called Cornerstone SMP. Um, but now I'm starting to do a single player let's play on my second channel. Alright, and I'm a Haphazardous Waste. I am also a Minecraft YouTuber, or at least trying to focus my content more around that. I kind of started off with just general gaming. I was playing games like Portal, Phasmophobia, stuff like that, but now I'm kind of shifting focus back to Minecraft. I also play on Cornerstone SMP, and uh, yeah, you'll see some live streams, videos, maybe even shorts from me, things like that. So it's a good time. Oh, thank you for reminding me, dude. Next year, starting January 1st, I will be posting shorts. I need to be grinding out these shorts. I actually, I think I have a better chance of if I'm going to post daily, I'll post a short every day. I, I want to see the effects of that. I, Decisive, I know you've, you've messed with shorts before, right? Yeah. Honestly, I kind of hate them. <laughs> oh, <laughs> well, like dude, it, they're such a pain to make, but I think it might be rewarding if I am consistent. Yeah, mm. from a content viewing perspective, I don't like shorts. Like, I don't, like, I find myself, like, I just go to the shorts feed and then I lose an hour of my day because they're just, like, For real? they're just kind of filtering through all this content. But from a channel growth perspective, I think it's a good tool to utilize however it also depends on like how your shorts are presented because yeah they are a pain to make but you can't just like throw whatever out there at least not anymore because early days of youtube uh, or early days of youtube shorts i should say I, I tried my hand at a couple of them and some of them picked up some traction but especially now like that it's so hard to get anything from youtube shorts unless you actually follow the specific formatting decisive i heard you kind of uh you had like a disagreeing tone do you have something to say yeah um i hate shorts <laughs> <laughs> i do not like them at all so shorts are very detrimental to uh channels who want 
long uh long form content viewers um so shorts they say shorts don't affect um your long form content which i highly disagree with because people uh, your subscribers will get your view your videos in the subscriptions feed and i don't care if they've done studies on this this is my opinion so your your shorts subscribers the sub subscribers you get from shorts will see your long form content in their subscriptions feed because nobody is going to go on youtube and not be or just be in the shorts feed like that is a rare occurrence People are going to watch oh my normal God. videos. Imagine just going on YouTube just to, it, just to look at shorts. That's that is some, that would that's some brain rot. Just, that's some brain rot right there. Oh. Yeah, exactly. Hard, hard agree. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, like, they're gonna see your videos in the subscriptions feed, but they only know you because of your short content. Unless if you're able to be like Mr. Beast and people know who you are. Unless if you have that following already then people aren't going to like, like the the shorts viewers sh short subscribers aren't going to click on your videos because it's just another random like who is this person oh yeah i saw them in the shorts feed i only like their shorts and then they don't click on the video that ruins your ctr i i low-key agree with that well, i hate you. maybe if they're like clips from the podcast that actually might be good okay if they're that, yeah, that's it, how it, I utilize shorts too. I use it as kind of like a tool to encourage people to go view my long form content. But I will agree to Decisive's point though, where it, it can hurt. Because when I mentioned that it's a good channel growth tool, that's just in terms of purely subscribers. It's not so much in terms of, uh, not so much as like returning viewers or, and I, I could see a negative impact on your long form content as a result of that. But yeah, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> it's like this kind of, I guess it all depends on like how you utilize your shorts because it, it is hard to make short form content and have people stay for your long form because you have to look at it from the perspective of the viewer, right? You find a channel, you like a short. Do you go to that channel and look at all like their long form content? Typically, no. They subscribe and then they just keep scrolling through the shorts feed. Mm-hmm. I absolutely agree with that. That's why I don't like shorts content. I feel like you would need a separate channel because if the people... In order to not take the chance of ruining your long-form content CTR or watch watch time, you need a different channel to upload the shorts to. Uh, just because... If your if the shorts viewers are really that interested in your in your stuff, they're gonna find a way to go watch your stuff. So if you just have like a um a channels tab or whatever on your the homepage of your shorts channel, easy click to be like, oh yeah, this is our their long form content. This is their main channel. Let's go here. Let's see what this is about. And then they see, oh, this person is actually uploading the clips from the shorts that I watch and I'm interested in those shorts. So if they are interested, they will find a way to watch your long-form content. But taking that chance of ruining your CTR and ruining your average watch time is not worth it. One thing I've learned as well is like, it's not so much you have to get your viewers' attention these days or get the people on YouTube's attention to come check out your channel. It's also another thing to keep their attention. You have to keep them watching your content. So consistency is like absolute priority. And not only that, but like you also, but that's why I say consistency before quality because quality involves things like your channel thumbnail, your, your, your thumbnail, like your title, your thumbnail, description, how you present your videos, things like that. It keeps that attention going. And so like one thing I'm even gonna do going forward is I'm gonna remove that end card I usually put at the end of videos and just list the next videos for my content while I'm giving the outro. And I think I've seen you do that too, Decisive, just because it lets the viewer say, okay, video's ending, but hey, here's some new videos I can click on right now. That sort of thing. Hmm. Hmm. So yeah, it's all so... kind of like, it's all kind of like just, one, you have to present yourself in a way that gets a viewer's attention. 
but two, you also have to present your content in a way that keeps their attention as well. Right. That's where um, consistency comes back to it because with like around the block podcast, the, this podcast, you know, like it's the the same kind of thumbnail layout each video, so people are gonna recognize like, oh, this is another around the block podcast episode. And with my second channel, it's very simple looking. Like the the thumbnails are very simple looking, but I have the same font for the the um, uh, video ep- or episode number. Um, and I also have my Minecraft character, so people know it's me. It, it's like kind of iconic in a, in a way. Like to those viewers, it's iconic. So they recognize like, oh, this is a indecisive TV upload. It, it kind of garners that the audience and it will keep them knowing who you are. So keeping a consistent thumbnail style is very important as well. Yeah, and that oh, notebook that I kept on uh, my YouTube research, I literally on the first page just put like the golden rules of YouTube. And number one was consistency. <laughs> yeah, that is like the biggest thing. You have consistent mm-hmm. thumbnails so people can tell you have consistent uploading. Um, upload times, upload days. You have uh, like consistent personality. You don't want to be very enthusiastic one video and then be very mellow, monotone the, the next video. Because new viewers coming to your super awesome video where you're like, oh my gosh, look at this big project I made. Whoa. Be sure uh, to, to hit that like button. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> you, <laughs> you don't want to gain new viewers on that video and then the next video you're like what's up guys um i'm playing minecraft today and i'm doing this thing because then people are going to be like this is not what i subscribe for what is this <laughs> and then they click that unsubscribe button because they're like oh shoot that's inconsistent so yeah it's like personality has to stay consistent just be yourself in the videos thumbnail is consistent uh the, the way you make it consistent upload time consistent um the the let's plays you do have to be consistent so doing like the one-off videos i think is very good uh to do every once in a while but maybe take have them take the place of one of the let's play videos for that day so let, let's say if you did wednesday and saturday are your upload then like wednesday you upload a let's play saturday you upload a let's play that next wednesday Say, let's say you want to do a one-off video. You do a one-off video for that day. After you've you've done it for a a little bit, of course, you don't want to switch that up because people won't won't know what to expect. So for like three weeks, you do, let's play, let's play, let's play, let's play, let's play, let's play. Oh, one-off video, let's play. Something like that, right? Taking notes. Mm -hmm. All right. (laughs) All right, I think it's a good time to wrap up. Uh, For everybody still listening, thank you for... Um, completing your first class of YouTube 101 with Decisive TV. I hope you all learned a lot. Um, also, thank you, Haphazardous Waste, for joining us. Hopefully we can get some more episodes with both of you guys in the future. I had a great time. This is a fun episode. It was kind of... Yeah, uh, it was great. It was a lot, it was a lot of YouTube information. I know um, people that might watch this might not be doing YouTube like as a hobby, but for people that do, I think it is going to be very interesting for them. Yeah. I watch uh, a lot of different podcasts. I know we're at the end of the, the, the podcast, but I watch a lot of different podcasts that have like Mr. Beast in it because I'm specifically looking for what he does. So having having somebody else to kind of be like, yeah, this is what I figured out is pretty interesting to me as well. So... Hopefully somebody out there is listening and they're like, oh my God, this is awesome. Oh yeah, same here. I, I mean, I I highly encourage any aspiring creators to do what I'm doing and just kind of going down the rabbit hole of information surrounding like what makes good YouTube channel, what gets you recommended to the algorithm, things like that, even to the smallest details you can think of. It's really interesting stuff. Um, but if you guys are not subscribed yet to these two fine gentlemen, please do so. Um, if you guys have any videos you want to plug, 
or other people you want to uh, shout out? Um, time off Drew because he gave me the idea for changing the Minecraft sky on my thumbnails. Shout oh out yeah, to Drew. time off Drew as well because I mean, he's the biggest reason why my thumbnails have changed so much over time. <laughs> yeah, we... and he's also just a really good YouTuber in general. For yep. real, we I wish we could get him on. Unfortunately, he was busy now, but definitely in the future we will have to do an episode where all of us are on because that that's going to be yes. a a joy to record agreed agreed yes. all right sweet i have a few more things i'm wondering so that that will be a good a good episode as well looking forward to it all right thank you guys again for uh being here and doing this i hope all the listeners enjoyed listening to the podcast another episode of around the block is in the books so uh yeah thank you all and i'll see you next time thanks for having us bye